Hi everyone, my name is Christopher Kane, and I'm a graduate student at the University of California, Riverside. And today I'd like to tell you about a new source of VAO features in the redshifted 21 centimeter signal from cosmic reionization. A feature like this would not only make it easier to detect and identify the signal, but could also aid in constraining the reionization process. So first, a little background. We know that BAO features appear in the 21 centimeter signal and uh, some other cosmological observables, thanks to the relative velocity offset between baryons and dark matter, known as the stream velocity. And this exists because of Thomson scattering between baryons and photons prior to kinematic decoupling. And its effects on early structure formation persist into the low redshift universe. Importantly, the power spectrum of spatial fluctuations in the stream velocity, which I've shown here, exhibits strong VAO features. Now, these features can make their way into the 21 centimeter signal and other observables like the Lyman Alpha Forest through a number of avenues. Anytime the stream velocity impacts a physical process that in turn affects an observable signal, it imprints its spatial fluctuations on that signal. And I've shown here a plot from Barkana 2018 that illustrates how the stream velocity and the 21 centimeter signal can be strongly correlated on hundreds of megaparsec scales. Broadly speaking, during reionization, there are two main avenues through which the BAO features can enter the 21 centimeter signal. One is through the stream velocity's effect on the sources of ionizing photons that drive reionization and shape the distribution of neutral hydrogen. Now the BAO feature from sources has been studied before in the literature. I've included a couple references here. Although large uncertainties remain because of the, prop the properties of the ionizing sources are not well constrained. An alternative avenue that hasn't been studied in detail is via the impact of the stream velocity on the small scale clumpiness of the IGM. It's believed that gas clumps on kiloparsec scales are responsible for setting the recombination rate during reionization. And these act as sinks of ionizing photons, so they're also important for the neutral hydrogen distribution. Moreover, the formation of these clumps is known to be suppressed by the stream velocity. So there's the potential for an effect here that is worth looking at. And our goal is to, is to quantify how important this effect is and how likely it is to leave detectable BAO features in the 21 centimeter signal. So we attacked this question in two stages. First, we simulated how the IGM clumpiness evolves during reionization in the presence of stream velocity. And we assessed how important this is for the recombination rate. And second, we used an analytical model for the signal, for the 21 centimeter signal, to assess the detectability of the resulting BAO feature. So our numerical simulations are designed to simulate the clumpiness of the IGM during reionization. And so they resolve the scales small enough to capture the recombination rate correctly. Our simulations can be thought of as controlled numerical experiments that simulate the reionization of a one cubic megaparsec patch of gas by plane parallel ionization fronts at a fixed redshift. As such, they do not explicitly include the sources responsible for reionization, but instead model the response of the gas to generic I fronts. Importantly, they include the full coupling between radiative transfer and hydrodynamics, which is needed to accurately capture how the gas responds hydrodynamically to photoheating by the radiation. The stream velocity itself is modeled by a constant offset between the gas and the dark matter in a fixed direction. And for more details on the methodology used here, I refer the interested listener to DLOECO 2020. So here's a short movie showing how the gas evolves in one of our simulations. You can see that the gas first collapses into filaments at high redshift following the evolution of the dark matter substructure. And when the radiation turns on at redshift eight, the dense filaments are quickly photoheated and they respond by relaxing into the surrounding medium over several hundred million years. 
note, note that the simulation domain is set up so that all the gas ionizes at about the same time. This is to avoid time delay effects. So we ran simulations with and without the stream velocity and looked at how this impacts the recombination rate. And this plot shows a zoom in of a small patch of gas that has been recently reionized in simulations with stream velocities of zero and twice the RMS value. And you can see that the gas clumping is suppressed significantly in the highest stream velocity run. And this demonstrates that patches of gas in parts of the IGM with higher stream velocities should have lower recombination rates. Now we look at the same patch, but about 100 million years later, after the gases had time to dynamically relax. And not only is there significantly less structure, thanks to the relaxation process, but the differences due to the stream velocity have largely vanished. And this suggests that the effect on the recombination rate is likely to be erased by the relaxation process, and thus should be relatively unimportant in patches that had been ionized for a long time. We can kind of quantify this entire process by looking at the clumping factor of ionized gas, which is proportional to the recombination rate. And you can see that after the radiation turns on, the clumping factor steadily rises as the radiation penetrates into the dense clumps of gas. And the clumping factor peaks after about 10 million years, at which time the variance between patches with different stream velocities, which I've shown here by the different, the three different curves, is also at a maximum. And at this point, the suppression in the clumping factor is about 10 to 15% for patches near the RMS value relative to the case with no stream velocity. However, once the clumping factor starts decreasing, thanks to the dynamical relaxation process, the stream velocity effect gradually disappears. And so this indicates that the cumulative impact of the stream velocity is washed out by the relaxation process. And so only recently reionized patches will contribute significantly to the net effect. However, as we'll see shortly, this effect may still be large enough to be important for the 21 centimeter signal under certain conditions. So forging ahead, we'll now take a look at how the effect we measure in our simulations translates into spatial fluctuations in the 21 centimeter intensity. Now, on large scales, it turns out that we can accurately model fluctuations in the 21 centimeter intensity during reionization using a linear bias expansion. And for this model, we can write the 21 centimeter fluctuation power spectrum as a sum of terms sourced by matter density fluctuations plus a term proportional to the stream velocity power spectrum. And the coefficient of this last term is a bias factor that quantifies the strength of the coupling between the stream velocity and the 21 centimeter signal. And this can be separated into two contributions. A sinks bias produced by the impact on the recombination rate that we just looked at, and a source bias coming from the impact of the stream velocity on photon sources. So here I'm showing the three power spectra that enter our bias model. And importantly, the amplitude of the stream velocity term is a couple orders of magnitude larger than the linear matter power spectrum at scales where the BAO features are prominent. So even the small effect that we see in our simulations may produce a coupling large enough to leave a detectable imprint on the signal. So using an analytical model for the coupling between the clumping factor and the 21 centimeter intensity, combined with our simulation results, we computed this sinks bias for several reionization histories. And the panel on the left here shows the square of the sinks bias as a function of ionized fraction. And the panel on the right shows the ionized fraction as a function of redshift for each history. Even though, and you can see that even though the histories are quite different, the square of the bias factor varies by a factor of a few at most, and usually less than this. 
And this illustrates the fact that the sink's bias is set primarily by straightforward gas dynamics and cosmology and is relatively insensitive to the details of how reionization proceeds or what sources are responsible for driving it. As a comparative backdrop, we analytically model the contribution to the bias factor that we expect from POP3 stars. So this would be the source bias term. And we focused on POP3 stars here because they are believed to form in low mass halos that should be significantly impacted by the stream velocity. Whereas POP2 stars form in higher mass halos that are unlikely to be affected. And we show the square of the source bias here for a range of star formation efficiency parameters. Now this parameter is equal to the fraction of gas in halos that is converted into POP3 stars. And the range for this parameter is pretty large in the literature. It goes from about 10 to the minus four to 10 to the minus two. And for a fiducial efficiency of 10 to the minus three shown here by the dashed cyan curve, the source bias is pretty similar to the sinks bias during reionization. But as indicated by the pink shaded region, it could be two orders of magnitude larger or smaller for the parameter range that we consider here. And this is only one of several POP3 parameters that enter the source bias calculation that are theoretically uncertain. And so the true uncertainty is probably much larger than this. So what we see here is that unlike the sinks bias, the source bias is rather difficult to constrain theoretically because it depends so strongly on highly uncertain source properties. So is the signal detectable? Well, the answer for the majority of reionization is probably not. It turns out that for the sinks bias factors that we estimate here, the contribution to the signal is one to two orders of magnitude below the percent level, and so quite small. However, there is one era at which a detection is much more likely. Early in reionization, when the universe is about 10 to 15% ionized, it is expected that the bias factor that sits in front of the linear matter term in our expansion should go through zero. And this happens because this term is proportional to the sum of fluctuations in the matter density and the neutral fraction. And these tend to be anti-correlated early in reionization because the most dense regions ionize first. And when these fluctuations are exactly anti-correlated, the linear matter term disappears and the second order term becomes the dominant one. So I've shown here the components of the 21 centimeter brightness temperature fluctuation power spectrum in a realistic version of this scenario. The black dash curve is the second order matter term that is the dominant term at this time. While the blue and pink shaded regions show the range of possible contributions from the sink and source terms respectively based on our results. And we find here that for realistic reionization histories, the sinks term is constrained to contribute one to 10% of the signal for wave numbers between 0.05 and 0.1 h over megaparsecs, while the source term may be much larger or much smaller than this, depending on high, uh, highly uncertain source parameters. So because the sinks term is so tightly constrained compared to the source term, it provides a kind of rough lower bound on the amplitude of the expected BAO feature. Moreover, the thermal noise sensitivity limits of SKA and HERA, which I've shown here by the dotted curves uh, for wave numbers above 0.06, are only slightly larger than the expected amplitude of the second order matter term. And this indicates that future iterations of these experiments may be able to reach sensitivities high enough to detect the signal around this time and possibly see the BAO feature. So just to summarize, we've demonstrated using numerical simulations combined with analytical models that the stream velocity can imprint a BAO feature on the reionization 21 centimeter signal through its impact on the ionizing photon sinks that set the recombination rate. 
And although this signal is too likely to uh, is likely to be too weak to detect during most of randomization, it may appear at the one to ten percent level at wave numbers between 0.05 and 0.1 h over megaparsecs when the universe is about 10 to 15 percent ionized and the 21 centimeter power spectrum is at a minimum. Moreover, unlike the source driven signal, the signal we derive here from sinks is set by straightforward gas dynamics and cosmology and this makes it fairly insensitive to the details of reionization and the properties of the sources that drove it. Thank you very much.